of selling your soul in exchange for great fame. This guy, Professor Griff, formerly of the Hip Hop Group Public Enemy, has gone into some of the initiation rituals which are required of artists in the hip hop business in order to make it big. He's talked about it in his books and his YouTube videos and public talks. Griff has had his house burnt down, he's been poisoned and he's been shot at many times. And this does tend to be validation that you might just be onto something. And he tells a story about how many uh, prominent hip hop artists, the sort of things that they have to do in exchange to make it big. And he tells a story about this guy, Sean Combs, AKA Puff Daddy, P Diddy, whatever the hell he's calling himself this week. <laughs> and the story that Griff tells is that uh, apparently Puffy, along with many others it would seem, was required to go through an occult ritual which involved lying naked in a coffin, surrounded by his peers, uh, masturbating and recounting his entire sexual history. And this is apparently uh, a version of an initiation ritual that takes place within the Skull and Bones Society at Yale University. They've got a version of it for the music industry. And no coincidence that Puffy crops up time and time again in the Forbes Hip Hop Rich List, because they do one of those. And in the top three of that, for many years, you found Puffy, Dr. Dre, and Jay-Z. All highly compromised artists, it turns out. And it's not as if they don't give their little symbols and their little clues as to what's going on. Uh, the dark forces that control the music business and the A-list artists that they use do tend to leave their calling cards everywhere and give you little reminders of who's running the show. Uh, this goes into, this ties into sigil magic, which is what John and Bonnie Mitchell were talking about in the video that we saw on Friday evening, very much connected to what goes on in the music game. So often with Jay-Z, you see him flashing up this hand signal, this triangular sort of arrangement. And the cover story that is always given for it, and the way that Jay-Z has uh, explained it, is that it's the rock sign. It's said to be uh, the depiction of a diamond. And this ties into the name of Jay-Z's record label, which initially was Rockefeller Records. Interesting choice of name. These days it's called Rock Nation. But there was a video on YouTube, which is not there anymore, but from 2009, where Jay-Z was saying he invented this sign. And it was the rock sign, it uh, symbolizes a diamond, and it's the bling culture of hip-hop. But it's not the only time you see this uh, particular symbol. There's Kanye West, his uh, stooge mate in it as well. Uh, here's Beyonce, who flashed up this symbol, Mrs. Jay-Z, of course, at a Grammy Awards ceremony a couple of years ago. And here is Anton LaVey, high priest of the Church of Satan, who just happens to be doing the same symbol back in the 1960s. And it turns out to be known as a triangle of manifestation. And the idea is that it uh, symbolizes the unity of mind, body, spirit, thoughts, emotions, actions. And when you've got those three elements in balance and all working together, you are supposed to be able to imbue this symbol with your will and your intent of whatever you wish to manifest into physical reality. So, a little bit different to uh, a diamond celebrating hip-hop blink culture. And what you get at Jay-Z concerts is he will throw up the instruction for all the fans to put their rock signs in the air, and on instruction you have sort of 10,000 people in a stadium all throwing up this sign. And it raises the interesting question of what it might be that that sign has been imbued and empowered with in terms of the will and the intent of those that are creating it. Another simple calling card that we see time and time again is prominent artists covering one eye or highlighting one eye in some way. A couple of examples of Rihanna doing it, a couple of examples of Lady Gaga. And here's every other goddamn artist in the entire industry. 
if you have a favourite musician who has had a hit record in the last five years, they'll be in that picture somewhere. People say it's just a coincidence. People say they're doing it to be cool, it's just a way of being fashionable. This to me goes way beyond the realms of coincidence. Don't know about you, just the way I feel about it. Another symbol that we see a lot, Beyonce once again, thro throwing up the, uh, the sign, it's supposed to mean okay. Everything's okay, everything's cool. We see this time and time again. Here's a young Michael Jackson flashing up the same symbol. Okay, before we go to that one. Um, all these uh, signs and symbols come with innocent sounding cover stories. So Jay-Z tells you it's the rock sign. This one is supposed to be an okay, but uh, I think most people have realized that there's another uh, connotation of this sign, which is that it's the formation of a six. And when you've got the three fingers uh, extended as well, it's implying uh, six to the power of three, or three sixes, six, six, six. Uh, number of the beast in the book of Revelation. Here's Eminem giving us a, a nice family friendly uh, sign. And the one eye. Yep. And the one eye also. Two for the price of one. And this one, uh, it's all to do with the way the thumb is extended. But the uh, cover story for this one, or the innocent version of it, is that it's supposed to mean I love you. It really it says that, doesn't it? And it's supposed to be part of uh, uh, sign language for the deaf that was invented by this woman called Helen Keller decades ago. And so when you see that sign being done in public, it's supposed to mean I love you. It's supposed to, supposed to be a capital I, capital L, and a U arranged in some way so that it's represented by that. Now, here's your last president, village idiot Bush. <laughs> when inbreeding goes wrong. <laughs> and uh, he's just the sort of fella to say I love you in public, isn't he, really? <laughs> really, really goes. Here's the current president who just happens to be doing the same sign, more or less. And here's your next president. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> Let me know how it works out for you. So of course they're all saying I love you, because they like that, they care. But here is what I and many other researchers think is being evoked here. It's Baphomet, this um, androgynous horned entity, which is very much beloved of the dark forces controlling the music industry. You see depictions of Baphomet cropping up time and time again in videos and all sorts of other things. And so this symbol that you see politicians doing as well as musicians, I would suggest is uh, an evocation of Baphomet. <laughs> and incredibly, there are still people in the world, particularly in the UK, that think Russell Brandt is some kind of genuine representative for critical thinking truth seekers everywhere. Yeah. And they seem to think that Russell Brand is here to help us and save us and lead us. These pictures tell a different story. When it comes to red flags about Russell Brand, I could do an entire day's presentation on that alone. Anyone that still thinks Russell Brand is the real deal, no. I really don't know what to tell you. Okay, so we're sticking with a form of symbolism and also a form of sigil magic. And we're getting into the realms of what is known as predictive programming. And this is the placement of visual clues and visual uh, symbols which depict an event which is yet to occur. It's encoded into works of popular culture such as films, TV shows, videos, cartoons. And it is an encoded way of announcing something which is yet to occur. And there have been so many examples of this in recent years, and particularly in recent months. The rate is really being stepped up. And for every major terror, in inverted commas, event, or every false flag hoax using actors, 
because we get quite a lot of those these days. There will have been some work of popular culture which has foreshadowed what is to come. And people would ask, how can this be? Well, if the same forces ultimately that are directing these events and causing them to occur are the same forces that control the entertainment business, then you can understand how uh, these symbols and these clues can be inserted into these works. So we'll look at a few examples, and then I'm going to give my view as to why I think it's happening. This was a scene from the Batman Dark Knight movie, and there's a scene in it where they're looking at a map of Gotham City. And for a split second, you see the word Sandy Hook, the name Sandy Hook. I'm not sure if you can see it on this slide, but that's what it says. In the earlier Batman movie, it was pointed out that they were also looking at a map of Gotham City, and it didn't say Sandy Hook for that particular region. It said South Hinkley. So for this movie, the place name was changed to Sandy Hook. And this movie was released just a few months before the uh, shooting, or not, at the elementary school in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. What a coincidence. When it comes to 9-11, there are YouTube videos that go on for 25 minutes, consisting of clips of movies, TV shows, videos that have foreshadowed the events of September 11th, 2001. I've just selected a couple, but there are many, many more that you can find. This was from uh, the movie Independence Day, and you see this clock counting down, and there just happens to be a split-second frame where you see 9-11-01. This is from the first Matrix movie, which was released in 1999, and it's the character Neo's uh, passport, and it has an expiry date on it. And the expiry date just happens to be 11th of September, 01. And now we get to exa some examples from the music industry. This is a record sleeve from the British rock group Supertramp. And it's for an album called Breakfast in America, and it came out in 1979. And on the sleeve, you get a view from an aeroplane window, going over Manhattan, there's the Manhattan skyline, there's the Twin Towers, and there's the Supertramp logo going across the top of the picture. Somebody worked out, I don't know who, and I don't know how they ever come across these things, but somebody did, they worked out that if you reverse the image, make a mirror image of it, something interesting happens. Now, <laughs> where you have the name Supertramp in reverse, the two characters at the end <laughs> appear to be making a 9 and an 11, and they're positioned directly above the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. This was 1979. This was a little known hip hop album, wasn't a big hit, uh, from a group that's not too well known uh, called The Coup. It was from an album called Party Music and it was released in June 2001 with this original sleeve. And it depicts the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center exploding exactly the way they did three months after the album was released. And uh, Boots Riley, the, the guy there, the front man of the group, is said to have designed the sleeve. And he said that it was designed to be a statement against capitalism. And he said that you know when the events of September 11th happened, he was shocked at how this album seemed to foreshadow it. So who knows what the true story is there but a very interesting sleeve to have come out at that point. And there's a more accurate... <laughs> there's a more accurate rendering of uh, what probably went on. This is Michael Jackson's Blood on the Dance Floor album. Interesting title. Interesting Masonic checkerboard floor going on. Interesting red suit, colours of Saturn, but don't have time for all that. In the background, you've got a city crumbling to dust, which looks very similar to Manhattan. 
This is the Amazon page for Jay-Z's iconic Blueprint album. And at the top there, you can see the date on which it was released. And the date just happens to be September 11th, 2001. What were the chances? September 11th, 2001 was a Tuesday. Most albums are released on a Monday. For some reason, this one was put out on this date. And a more recent example, a video from the rapper, it says here, <laughs> Little Wayne, not my idea of a rapper, but maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> and this was for uh, a video for a song called <laughs> My Home Is Still. It's a classic, look it up. <laughs> and there's a scene in the video where he's in a movie theater and he's surrounded by 12 skeletons. And this video was released a few days before 12 people, we're told, were shot, we're told, in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. What a coincidence. So, this predictive programming, it doesn't matter whether the event in question happened the way we were told it did, because many of these events are false flag, hoaxes, or they're staged using actors, but either way, the intention is the same which is to uh, foreshadow what, what they know is to come. I'll explain that more in a while. I did just want to give you a little lyric from that little way that record. Thought you might enjoy it. This is the sort of stuff that the kids are getting down to these days, you know. This is hip-hop in 2012, 2015. I'm sure it's uh, some great wisdom being communicated. <laughs> One thing I do find interesting is the line, I've got to put that patch over my third eye. I think that's probably happened. And then the chorus is, don't make my goons go stupid, go stupid, go stupid, which clearly you will if you listen to too much of this. Okay. This is a brilliant simplification of the central tenets of natural law. I love this, really sums it up. Do no harm, but take no shit. It's the moral code of the universe set into place by the creative force behind the universe. I learn all my stuff about natural law from the work of Mark Passio, as I'm sure many of us did. And uh, it's called many other things. It's known as universal law sometimes. Some people refer to it as karmic law, the law of cause and effect. But whatever the name, the principle is the same. It's consequentialism. Every action has a reaction. And uh, we are bound by this. And the free will choices that we make and the behaviors that we take uh, come with consequences, whether they're positive or negative. So you can expect to reap the consequences for the decisions you make. And here it is in slightly extended form, is the non-aggression principle, the sacred feminine, which is the do no harm bit, and then the self-defense principle, the sacred masculine, take no shit. Uh, and put another way, do not treat others in a way you would not well, like to be treated yourself. It's a very simple truth. I can't help thinking that if everybody in the world were to observe it and live their lives by it, then it's a better deal for everyone. The world changes overnight, and humanity has a whole different experience to what it's having right now. But there doesn't appear to be anywhere near the level of understanding of this that there needs to be. But I believe, as do many other researchers, that the dark occultists, the dark magicians that are pulling the strings of the music industry understand this, and they understand that they are bound by it the same as everyone else is. What we are talking about, however, is psychopaths yes. who are mentally ill, and they have a very skewed and twisted and warped interpretation of this and of how it applies to them.